Welcome back to another episode of what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vincent Lancey, speaker and author of the book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption. Want to know what it's really like to be an entrepreneur? Well, you came to the right place. Whether you're already an entrepreneur or looking to start your journey tomorrow or just someone who needs a little extra motivation to get through the day, this is the perfect podcast for you. This is the place where you will learn exactly what it's like in the world of entrepreneurship and hear authentic stories of entrepreneurs grinding on each episode. My goal for this podcast is to help you realize that giving up is never an option. If you missed the last episode, be sure to download it after you tune in today. But before I introduce my guest, I'll share another entrepreneurial story to inspire you all. I will now introduce the, at the time this article was written, the third richest person in the United States in Larry Ellison at $54 billion. If you're not familiar with that name, you're definitely familiar with this company and products and Oracle, which is a database software firm. You've probably seen them on your computer at some point. But the article started by saying, Larry Ellison's adoptive father repeatedly told him he was good for nothing. And that was according to Fortune. Larry grew up in a working class family in Chicago of Jewish immigrants. And he remembers looking at a magazine that called it the oldest and worst black ghetto in the United States. He continued to drop out of college twice, but when he got on his feet with a company called Ampex Corporation, one of his responsibilities was to build a database for the CIA. In 1977, he started this entrepreneurial drive where him and two other coworkers left Ampex to start their own database management company of their own. I really like this part where he didn't feel anyone would take a gamble on his brand new product or idea so him and his co-founders decided to not release version 1.0, which was the first version of Oracle, but instead releasing Oracle version 2. This idea worked. Oracle's first customer was a huge one in the CIA, and the product later became the most popular database ever sold. I'll now end this right up with a quote that shows a testament to his character and work ethic. In when I started Oracle, what I wanted to do was create an environment where I would enjoy working. That was my primary goal. Sure, I wanted to make a living. I certainly never expected to become rich. Certainly not this rich. Hey, Antonio, what'd you like best about this story? I love that story. I, and I, I don't know about you, but I'm addicted to success stories. I just yes. I could read them all day long. I can watch videos all day long. What, what hit me were two things. One uh, is that he wanted to create a life by design. He wanted to live uh, life on his terms and enjoy going to work and building something each and every day. And that resonates a lot with me. Uh, the other thing too that really stands out that I, I'd want to comment on is that his father, his family may not have been very supportive. And although I have a very supportive family uh, and my wife has a very supportive family, we weren't always supported. There was a lot of pressure to go get corporate jobs, do things the safe way, the sure way. Um, we didn't go that route and we hit a lot of resistance for quite a few years. Um, but people come around and, and they become way more supportive once you, once you uh, pave your own path. So uh, thanks for sharing that story. That is, that is awesome. Yeah, well said there. I'm excited for everybody to learn all about that path. But you make a good point there. When you're fighting through the trenches, earning a name, things are much, much more difficult. And you're always faced with certain people telling you, hey, that nine to five is looking good now. Absolutely. That voice you all just heard, though, that's the sound of today's guest. And my guest, Antonio, is someone I hold my real estate license with his brokerage down in Tampa at Lombardo Team Real Estate. We get along right away when we met because he's another extremely hard worker who diligently tries to improve his life each day. He has now expanded his portfolio to include many businesses in the Tampa area and out of state, including transaction management companies and insurance companies. Him and his wife, Julia, have created an incredible community of people down here with their businesses in Tampa Bay. And it's an honor to have him on the show. Antonio, thanks for coming on today. Man, Vin, thank you so much for the opportunity, especially given uh, just the current timing. This is the most important thing I think we could be doing is, is connecting. Absolutely. Everybody listening on, we're recording this right here in the middle of this coronavirus pandemic. So we've taken the time to help make a difference together. But Antonio, would you mind please previewing your story a bit and introducing yourselves to our listeners without giving too much of your entrepreneurial journey away? <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to. Thank you for the opportunity. So, I mean, I, I've got to make a long story short because, um, you know, it, it, it's been a long road. But my start, my entrepreneurial start really 
began when I was younger. I was actually 13 years old when I started my first business uh, with, with my dad, signing off on some of the business documents. Um, didn't always do things as legit. I was a child, but I, I knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew that I wanted to be in business. Um, so I actually started a web hosting business back when you could build your own computers. Uh, I ran a T1 line into uh, my bedroom and my parents didn't know about it. So I signed off on a super expensive uh, bill that I quickly couldn't pay. Um, I didn't know how to sell, but I knew that I had, I had the dream. I was, I was on the path of wanting to do something great, just didn't know how. Fast forward to college. Uh, I went to college, not really with much of a purpose. It was just the next thing to do after high school. Right. Uh, bounced around a ton of different majors. Uh, again, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, so I wanted to get into business. So I, I focused on business. I ended up graduating uh, with a degree in economics. Um, and I wanted to go to grad school for finance. And I, and I also wanted to break into banking. I thought that would kind of be the next, next step in my journey. Um, but I graduated in 2008. And in 2008, I couldn't get an unpaid internship at that time. Right. Um, you know, I, I couldn't get a job. It was just, it was crazy. It was kind of like now. It was just complete chaos. And I think part of what we're going through right now takes me back to that time. And it gets me fired up, energized, and excited. And I know that's kind of rare today. I think a lot of people, um, you know, shut down when they uh, are facing adversity. You can't do that. And that's actually when I started my next business and it was my first successful business uh, right after I had graduated uh, from college. Um, yeah, so that was really the start of, of really what I do now. That business was a painting company. I went door to door, knocked on doors eight hours a day, seven days a week, uh, worked my tail off doing something that I was extremely afraid of, being an introvert and a, a really shy person. Um, I was... I was cold prospecting all day long and it, it tore me up. It really did for, for months, but I cracked the code on what it took to be successful. I didn't quit. And eventually I started getting landing sales and closing deals. Um, and that allowed me and my business partner who I, I formed the business with um, to grow that, that company. And that eventually led to real estate investing. And now some of the real estate businesses that I own, co-own um, and get to operate with my my business partners and great friends absolutely well thank you for previewing your story i know our listeners are gonna have a lot to learn from you because you have so much different experience in multiple states so antonio something i do on this show is called the big five on this show my guests and i will go over this series of five questions to help you the listeners learn what it's really like to be an entrepreneur Are you ready to go i'm ready to go let's do it Great. So when did you realize that you weren't happy with what you were doing or that you just needed a change to truly start this entrepreneurial journey? You may have just previewed it a bit, which is great. I'd love to learn more. Yeah, I, I think it was in school. I, I love learning. I'm, I'm addicted to learning. I learn. I, I've got multiple licenses now. Uh, I take courses online. I, I read a lot of books. I love learning, but I hated school. I hated organized education. Um, it just didn't serve me well. It wasn't the right platform for me. Um, I think that was for me the big eye opener and, and it kind of gave me an idea of what might come next. Uh, and I did have one internship. I, I've had a few other jobs, but one real internship that gave me somewhat of a corporate experience. Um, and I remember it was during the summer and it was for me the biggest eye opening experience that I did not want to do that for the rest of my life. Um, if you love working as an employee, that's awesome. I think there are people that are really meant to do that, but that was not me. Um, I was in financial advising and clocking in and clocking out, hmm. shredding papers and, and just kind of going through a, a daily, for me, it was a, a bit mindless. It was just minutia. I, I couldn't do it. I, if I'm not building something of value, I just don't feel um, fulfilled. It, it's hard for me to do. Yeah, I could definitely resonate with you a lot. You know, summer internships, grinding, trying to better yourself. And kind of same with me. It's, you know, not that I don't like the nine to five role. And, you know, everybody's different. Some What works for some doesn't work for others. But, you know, me and you, I could, I could agree. We're good hands on trying to make something yeah. happen on our feet. <laughs> you got to do it. I, you know, some people would say that's you, you or I being a millennial. Uh, I would say that's us being entrepreneurs. You got to be spending your time building something great, impacting people and making a difference. I, I really think that's an important calling. Absolutely. You know, after my accident, you know, I had the, I worked my whole life. I thought I wanted this corner office right away with this big salary and this title. And, you know, it is something I still do want, 
but there's other things I kind of want more for different reasons. You know, now with the books and the podcast, I'm very excited for what the, sh- the future holds. That's awesome. But um, Antonio, now here, you're on the entrepreneurial journey. You're opening a lot more businesses now. You're getting into different facets. What would you say the two most difficult parts of being an entrepreneur are? And if they're <laughs> different, have they changed from when you were just doing a few things? Yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Um, I, it would be hard to narrow it down to two things. I'll, I'll try my best. Yeah, I yeah. Think, I, think it's, I think everything is difficult about being an entrepreneur because the buck stops with you. and and people aren't going to cut you breaks. They're responsible for everything. You have to wear a lot of hats. Um, you, you have to be good at a lot of different skills. Um, it's very challenging. And although we live in a society that values entrepreneurship, um, and, and it can be very rewarding uh, in, in our country, yep. it also is, is really frowned upon, I think, from the standpoint of um, – just the challenges that come your way, the, the perceived risks. Um, you know, the entrepreneur is a risk taker. It's, it's someone that's willing to, you know, calculate the odds and pull the trigger anyway. Yeah. Um, keep going, please. You're it's great. tough. I, so I, for me, for me personally, one of the hardest things about being an entrepreneur was sales. You have to sell, you have to learn how to market, sell, close. Um, and I was not born that way. It's not within my comfort zone. I've really had to work really hard to learn how to sell myself, uh, sell my resume, sell my services, um, and connect with clients. And so for me, that was difficult. And I think for a lot of other entrepreneurs, that could be pretty difficult. And now, because you have your hands dipped in a few businesses, what business is the hardest for you with the clients to get ahead of these clients, get with these guys? Um, I think the hardest is, is the real estate brokerage. It, starting a real estate brokerage was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And I've started other companies. Yeah, I would love to. It's a competitive industry. I I picked an extremely competitive, (laughs) efficient industry that's changing every day. Um, And, uh, and, and I work with other entrepreneurs. So, you know, it's, it's just challenging in a lot of ways that it can be very dynamic on a daily basis. Um, And, and, it's fun. It's exciting. There's nothing else I'd rather do, but it was almost an impossible task. I tell people now, there are so many great companies out there. I mean, so many great companies. I really, I don't think it matters what industry you break into. Um, there's a lot of competition. That's what I love about America, but it's almost like a new business shouldn't even exist because there's so many amazing options out there. So to grow and succeed in the marketplace, you really have to be um, you're very, very best. You have to over deliver and excel on every level. Yeah, I That's love hard. it. I love the motivation. You know, some people are discouraged by a lot of competition, but you went right into the fire and you took it. And how long have you been going on here in Tampa? How long has this branch of Lombardo Team Real Estate? I've, I've been self employed for uh, about 11 years. My wife and I moved from Detroit, Michigan um, almost five years ago, about four and a half years. And we started our first brokerage in Tampa, Lombardo Team Real Estate, uh, three and a half years ago. So we're, we're three and a half years strong. We're still a, a young company. We're still a startup. So we still deal with a lot of the same problems uh, most small companies deal with. Uh, but That's, we're growing every day. Yeah. Well, how many, um, how many licenses do you hold in your office now in just the three well, and a half short years? Yeah, we just spun off another office between the two brokerages in Tampa. We have almost 100 licensed real estate agents. That's incredible. Yeah, it's, it's been pretty crazy. Yeah, I mean, you just keep growing and growing. I'm excited for what the future is in store for you. But now that you have more of these things going on, let's take a second to reflect here. What would you say one of your greatest failures or lessons learned is? And what did it teach you? Why is it still stuck with you all the way up till today? You know... This is what I love about business. When you fail, and, and failure is not a bad thing, you're going to fail. I think I fail every day. I know I do. When you fail, you don't forget what caused that pain. As short or long as you feel it, as deep or shallow, you're going to feel it. You're going to get beat up. You're going to get punched right in the face like you're in a boxing match. But you learn, you pivot and adapt, and you get better and better and better. Um, one of the failures I've made is that I've, I have a tendency to spread myself a little thin because I get really excited about business. I get excited about new ventures. 
Um, and if you start a new company or you, you, you expand your business without a clear business model, that's going to exhaust you really fast. And um, one of the regrets I've had is, is really just part of what, it, what the journey looks like for most entrepreneurs, which is not spelling out a clear purpose, um, a clear vision, and a, a clear product or service. Um, I've learned that lesson the hard way. It, 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 I feel like it slowed me down a bit, but I've learned a lot. And now I know how to implement um, the clear vision, that clear purpose in my business going forward. Yeah, I love that advice. That's definitely valuable for everybody listening on today. In what ways has your, if you could share with our listeners to maybe help them broaden their horizon here, in what ways has that grown and matured and you know, revamped? Yeah, I, one, one of the ways is really to get focused on the basics. When we're going through um, a worldwide pandemic and you're worried about the future of your business or the future of the economy, or you're just you know, worried and anxious in, in general, uh, don't do that. Get get inspired, get motivated, get focused. And when you get back to the basics, those things that produce results, um, that's when you really start to scale and where you really get your momentum back. And I think that's really important to do. I look back frequently uh, to that first successful business I started painting houses. The reason I loved that business so much when I was in it is that it couldn't have been more simple. You can buy paint at Home Depot for you know, 20 bucks a gallon. You can knock on anyone's door and without any license, without any, depending on what jurisdiction you're in, without any real skills, you could book a job painting someone's house or, or cleaning their house. Let's say you're power washing. Yeah. Um, it's simple. And so if you break any business down, I don't care how technologically advanced it is, how complex it is. It comes down to that old painting company where you, you knock on doors, you buy a gallon of paint, and you apply it to the house uh, and get paid. Make sure you collect that check, watch your receivables. Um, you know, that, that's just business 101. I and love so that. If you can get take, down and dirty. Love it. Yeah. Take your business now or your idea now and break it down like that. Make it simple because uh, simple is better. It's, it's a great way to get focused and move forward. I could definitely agree with you there once you simplify things and break that down. I mean, I think everybody's guilty at some point from steering off track and not getting to where it really matters. So I think that's definitely valuable advice. But Antonio, if you could choose to have a conversation and learn from any entrepreneur, dead or alive, who would it be? <laughs> These are tough questions. Um, <laughs> you know, I would, I would pick, he's alive. He's alive and well, and uh, I love it. Warren Buffett. Good Warren one. Buffett is uh he's a real estate or not real estate he's an investor some real estate um famous investor one of the wealthiest people in the world uh and he's an entrepreneur and i've read every book that i can find about warren buffett um and including warren buffett and his investing and business strategies and philosophies and um he's he's one of the role models i have in my life i'd love to meet him one day Definitely a lot to learn from him. Let's paint this picture now. Where would that meeting be? Um, I think that meeting would be in his office. Um, you know, I think it would be, you know, in a part of town, in Omaha, in Nebraska. Nice. Um, I, that's where I would envision it, it happening. I know he travels quite a bit, but uh, I also feel like he spends a lot of time in his hometown and, and enjoys living there. So I think, I think uh, it'd be in his living room or in his office and just, you know, have a little bit of time with, with a great mind. Yeah, it's definitely a great choice for that reason. Now, I think I've already learned quite a bit through some of his, his, uh, his books and writings uh, and things that I follow. And so I, I appreciate that about him too. He doesn't bury his talents. He, he makes his philosophy and his strategies known. Uh, and so we can all learn from that. Confidence, and I think yeah. we can all, yeah, exactly. And we can share with others, you know, instead of keeping your secrets tight to the vest, you open up and share with others. And, and that ends up, doing great things for you in business. Great. Well, Antonio, you have so much going on here with your entrepreneurial endeavors. We're expanding rapidly as it is. Where do you see yourself in these endeavors in the future? Let's do one year and five years. One year from today, what's it going to be? You know, I think one year from now, you're not going to see a huge difference. And that, maybe that sounds a little um, depressing, but but not really. I, I think that in, in one year, it's surprising how much you can accomplish, but it doesn't look like you have. 
Um, and I think that a lot of my businesses are going to be better off, whether we're in a recession or the economy is on fire. It doesn't matter. My businesses are going to grow in market share. Um, that's I'm responsible for that. So it doesn't matter what market we're in. We're going to grow. And, and so we'll know that the bottom line will will have progressed. The businesses will have progressed. But looking from the outside in, you probably won't see a big difference. So the projects that we have coming out of the ground, we're doing some development deals and acquisition um, uh, different acquisition properties around the country right now uh, will be coming out of the ground. So in a year from now, um, you guys will be able to see that. I'll be able to see that and, and kind of uh, put my hand on that. But uh, honestly, a year from now, it's just going to be better than it was today. It, we're going to progress wherever we can, but I don't think it's going to be, um, I don't think my life is going to look a whole lot different than it does right now. I love it because you're really focusing on consistency and you know, there's a lot of stats about startups going under in a year and things like that so you're really honing in a theme of your episode is consistency and paying attention to the little things simplify it absolutely let's look a little further though five years i think there's going to be some kind of noise coming from lombardo's <laughs> in five years what do you got for thank me? you i i think five years is where the magic happens i think yeah. you can go five ten years out and i think that things are going to be so different than they are now um it's hard to even imagine what what life will look like in five years um you know i i think that we're going to have a lot more exposure to different markets around the country in five years a lot more and i think that that'll be enough time for some real momentum to pick up where our projects are even larger mm -hmm. uh there's more of them uh, the businesses are growing, whether they're franchising or just opening new offices. There's there's going to be a lot of movement there with yep. different businesses. Um, and I'm going to be connected with more people. I get to work with some of my best friends right now. And all of my businesses are are relationship-based. I think all businesses. Um, but I can't even imagine how many amazing people I get to work with five years from now. I think that'll be uh, a big difference. Yeah, I really definitely big. love that about you. You're great at connecting with people. You're a great person to know in the community. Um, Antonio, just to end off with our listeners, how many, what states are you currently operating in right now? Not just real estate, as overall portfolio to exemplify how hard you've worked to build that entrepreneurial brand. We are, uh, we're in Michigan, Florida. Uh, we're in Texas, uh, Washington, Idaho, and Oregon right now, and with different projects and businesses. Isn't that's amazing? You know, th you came down here from Michigan and you really spread out your wings. Uh, what's the next state on the mind? Do you have any other states in plan? Um, not, not necessarily. I mean, I it's more people and and different um, uh, opportunities in business that yes. are what I'm really focused on. So, you know, it's not that I've really chosen uh, city. I didn't even pick Michigan where I was born and raised, Michigan <laughs> chose me, right? Yeah. Um, I did choose Florida. That was a very careful, concise decision that I made to start business in Florida, move to yep. Florida. Um, but the other states we're in are just because of the amazing people that live there right now. Um, and, uh, and so, I, like I said, even with that five-year model, more amazing people. I really want to work with awesome people. I love that. Just going to keep opening up the doors for you. But thank you so much, Antonio, for coming on today. I know our listeners are going to see all the value in your episode. I love how you started the story with being a little kid, watching your pops and the entrepreneurial journey, and you realize this is something I wanted to do. I love the painting house story. So I think that's going to resonate with everybody listening on. And I'm certainly excited for that five-year plan. But it's time for the last word. Is there something you'd like to share with our listeners that we did not get to touch on today? Yes. Um, don't quit. I love that that was the, one of the first things you said um, in the introduction here today is, is don't quit. Don't quit. You, you have to keep going. You can pivot, you can change models. You can, you can do all kinds of things, but don't quit. Don't give up because it might feel like an eternity to break through, but you're going to break through. The greats always do. They always break through and they look back. They're so glad they didn't quit. Uh, you know, don't do it. Don't quit. Persistence and weathering that storm. You hear it a lot that, you know, the longer you're in the game, the more chances you take you know, the better off you're going to be. But Antonio, can you please share your professional social media, the websites, ways for our listeners to follow these endeavors or request your services? Yeah, that would be great. Uh, LombardoTeam.com is the address of our brokerage here in Tampa, Florida, LombardoHeights.com. Um, and then you can find me on social media on Instagram, Facebook, Antonio J. Lombardo. Uh, we'll pull up my profiles there. Um, so yeah, I'm always happy to connect. If you guys uh, can follow me, uh, friend request me, just shoot me some messages. 
Uh, and I've got different Facebook groups on Facebook too. Yeah, let's talk really about like. those because now with the, something he's been doing here during this pandemic, yeah. he's got a new um, Facebook group I've seen for business professionals to connect and try to work together and stay positive together. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but uh, my wife and I are self-quarantining uh, ourselves. We're in quarantine right now at home. Um, and, and one of the first disruptions that hit me right in the face is that I can't get face to face with people like I love to do. Yeah. Uh, most of my business meetings are still face to face, old school, grab a coffee. Um, so how do you pivot today? I'm, I'm not going to, you, you, there's two types of people. Um, I talk to people that are hunkering down, they're hiding, they're depressed, but I also get to talk to amazing people on the phone that are pushing through this. They're actually expanding their market share. Um, and I've already had access to social media. We, a lot of our uh, managers of different businesses, some of my partners are on social media, but I, I wanted to step up my game and, and just play my part. And so I, I created a business entrepreneurs community. Um, and that's, that's one place where people can go to to connect. And um, I'm just really glad to be able to offer that to the community. It's been really fun. I just started that, what, three days ago, I think, four days ago. Um, and it's been blowing up. Yeah, really I, I, I invited a bunch of people that were right away when it recommends the people. There are a bunch of great people. I had to add them right away. But remember to also check out the show on Instagram and Facebook at your favorite morning podcast and on Twitter at Podcasts by Lancey. My handles are at Vincent A. Lancey on all social media and YouTube. And my website is VincentALancey.com. Be sure to check out my book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption on Amazon now. But DM me or email me. I want to hear what you think. If you enjoyed today's episode, Please continue listening and rate what it's really like to be an entrepreneur five stars. I work hard to find value delivering stories for you each episode. And as always, I will end the quote that inspired me and know it will for you too. And this one is from Larry Ellison, the earlier articles, story, insight, and the creator of Oracle. He said, great achievers are driven, not so much by the pursuit of success, but by the fear of failure. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all on the next episode of What It's Really Like to Be an Entrepreneur.